Hi, welcome to the uh, Quilting Life podcast. I'm Chelsea Stratton. And I'm Sherry McConnell, and we're happy to be here with you today. Yeah, we're happy to be here. We're so grateful for all of the feedback that we have received for the podcast, whether you are watching it on YouTube, listening on your favorite subscriber. We really, really appreciate that feedback. And if you want to send in more questions, you can do so on YouTube, through Instagram. We've been right. receiving a lot of fun questions. Yeah. So. Get, we can, you can email us, too. We yeah. get them through email. Yeah, so. you can email us. Yeah. We really appreciate the questions. It really helps us kind of plan out our outline for the day. Yeah. So. Yeah. Today's yeah. quilt for Oh, the pod- t- wait. Today is... This or episode is airing on Monday, August, August 3rd. 3rd. Yes. So just we're a few days early yeah. on it. Uh, just so you know where our time frame is, right. that we're pretty current. Right. Uh, the quilt for today is my Hearts at Home quilt pattern. You can find this in my Etsy shop. We'll have the link in the show notes for everyone. And in the description below, in, too. In the description below. Yeah. Uh, I really, really love this quilt. I just remade it. On the quilt ladder, you can see the original version I made in our walkabout fabric. And I just remade it because I did a quilt along on my blog in April. And this one is very special to me because I used fabrics from all of our fabric collections, which is really cool. And then I'm going to bind it in our upcoming fabric collection that you guys will be able to see very, very soon. So that's why I've been waiting to bind it. And You'll have to tell me after we finish taping what fabric you're going to use for okay. binding. Yes, <laughs> I'm dying I, to know. I will. This <laughs> so it's hard to choose, honestly. Yeah, because this fabric collection is so so fun. Has a lot of fun prints. Probably, uh, I'll tell you after. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. But this requires two jelly rolls and yardage. Um, and then also you'll notice on the table we'll be able to show you this. I made a second version. This is Hearts at Home 2 on the table. You can also find this pattern in my Etsy shop. And instead of jelly rolls, um, it uses two honey buns. And my mom actually made a, in the pattern, you'll be able to find instructions to assemble the mini quilt in there as well. So mom made this for one of our market booths. For I quilt was like, market, right. I was behind on a few things, a little stressed and catching up. And she's like, I'll make the mini. It'll be so cute in our booth. So thank yeah. you mom for doing that. Oh, <laughs> So that's the quilts today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to move on to our regular features. Yeah. And I'm going to start with the new find and then Chelsea has an old favorite, right? Yes. Okay. So my new find is... I got my Fat Quarter Shop So Sampler box recently, and I did film an unboxing video if you want to watch that, but they did a sampler pack of these magic pins, and I've been using magic pins for a while. (gasps) They're pink. This is the size, this is the size I've been using, this blue, um, and, but what they did was they made, it's just about... I don't know, a quarter of an inch longer. I can tell, yeah. But it's also very thin. And I am so excited. There were just a few of these in the sampler box, but I am going to order them right away. I I had talked to the company at Market the last time we were there, I guess, Houston. I know, it's so sad. It's almost been a year. Yeah, so fall of 2019, I had talked to somebody at the company and they told me that these longer pins were coming in the thinner size. Oh, and so. Okay. They are here, and that's my so the new pink find. one. They so the only do that ones, in the pink to differentiate. I'm guessing, right? They had another new one in here. They had, well, they had another one that I've used before. This one is a short one that's great for applique. Oh yeah, and so that's the aqua. The blue is the one I've been using. The pink is the one now that I think I want to use because they're longer and yeah. thinner. But they also did l- this fork shaped pin oh. in purple that I hadn't seen before. So what would you S- typically Yeah, so use these that are one with the two prong. Right. So you know when you're budding two seams next to yes. each other? You put the oh, two prongs in and it keeps that's it together. So smart. Yes. So this is another one I probably should oh, wow. order. I they're just super easy to handle. See, so I have so. the original pins um okay. and I I use them all the time. Yeah. And I think I'm going to have to get the longer ones because I already felt like those ones were fairly long. Yeah. 
Um, I th- I'm, I'm excited to try these. So. Yeah, and I'm sure you know what cult I'm talking about. You've used the smaller ones recently probably quite a bit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have. I know which pattern so. you're thinking. Soon, guys. Yes, Literally, really soon. Actually, middle of August. I think next podcast mm. we'll be able to show you some of the new stuff. Yeah, it'll be really fun. So I got to double check my dates. I have an email yeah. with a date and I'll double check it. But <laughs> yeah, I've got two quilts back. I'm going to bind one today. And yeah. We're going. <laughs> okay, old okay. favorite. Well, actually, you noticed this before we started the podcast oh, today. Yeah. I'm going to share this as a new favorite too, just because it's so cute. Uh-huh. Um, I ran into Target to get some school supplies, and I found the cutest little pens for my girls, and they are like little bunnies. <laughs> so cute. Anything like super cute like that, but you can write in pink or you can write in purple and my girls love them. Oh, so I'm just going to throw that into the, the new find. The new find because okay. it is so adorable and you commented on it. So. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, so I have the old favorite today. I love this. It's the wool pressing mat. And at first I thought, I'm probably not going to use it um, all that much. I use it all the time because if I need to hurry, I have a smaller sewing space. And so if I need to hurry and press something quickly, this is like super quick instead of getting out my ironing board that I'm going to be like on a day that I know I'm ironing a lot. I have my ironing board out all the time, but this is my old favorite, my tried and true. I use it a lot. Awesome. Yeah, so I use that too. If you haven't too. tried one, they work really great. And yeah. And yeah, I just awesome. keep mine on my sewing desk now. Okay. And I mentioned to my mom, I actually um, rearranged my sewing room again. Well, I added a new sewing table and I'll have more to share on that on next time's podcast. Yeah, but maybe we can get some pictures and, yeah, and share them show em. for It'll, next time. It, and or it actually, still we could even pop up a picture into this podcast yeah maybe i will but send you a picture okay (laughs) (laughs) so that is our new find new finds an old favorite for today so should we go into listener some listener questions questions. yeah (laughs) really great questions as always yeah Uh, you guys have the best questions yes thank you so much it always keeps us like oh that's a great question oh wait before we do that (laughs) because we we have something what's new and so what's new is that a few minutes before we started taping, the doorbell rang. And oh, yes. We, I was <laughs> like, who could be at the door? And I have a, a ring camera and noticed it with the FedEx it's truck so outside. funny because we're all like, Mom, who's at the door? Let's yeah. check the ring doorbell camera. Yes. Yeah, so, but Chelsea and I have, were both waiting for FedEx deliveries today of quilts that are in the most recent issue of American Patchwork and Quilting. And... I'll just stick this one on the table. It is so pretty, you guys. It's a quilt I did with our Balboa fabrics and uh, just all these little stars. And I love c- star blocks. And guys, just yeah. like these are such tiny stars. They're adorable. They're like, just they're so, so cute. so cute. I'm so excited to have this quilt back, though, too, because... My friend Val Krieger did the oh custom goodness. quilting. Her quilting is fantastic. And it's just beautiful. And the border, and I did a purple binding. Remember, we talked about how purple about purple last time, but when, I just love this quilt. When deciding between a custom quilting and um, what is the other one called? Just edge a, to edge. Edge to edge, quilting, right. I, there's definitely a difference in nor you'll know when you make specific quilts like this one is perfect for a custom quilting the way she did the border right. and because you have extra blank space like right. it it really is nice to do a custom quilting job on on quilts that have extra space in the quilt right to do that so this one is very very pretty and i noticed she did stars that match these right in the quilting on the blank on yeah. the low volume squares. Yeah, and then I just love the little loops and swirls. Um, I feel like this yeah. quilt is kind of ocean inspired because of oh, the very. the paisley print that I used in all of the setting yeah. blocks. And I really wanted this to be, and uh, Balboa was really inspired by the ocean it for was. us. And so I wanted this to be kind of that quilt that that brought that out and you know, it's a perfect. Um, so yeah, the quilting just made it great. 
But this is what's really fun. Chelsea also, as we mentioned earlier, has a quilt in the magazine. And we got the magazine. They always send the magazine when they send the quilt back. And Chelsea's quilt is on the cover. So super (laughs) excited for her. Thanks, Mom. (laughs) She used all summer sweet fabrics. I did. For this fun Halloween quilt. Charcoals, grays, oranges, creams. And I didn't know it was going to be on the cover. Yeah. So it was kind of exciting. We found out about a week ago, but... I'm super excited to thumb through the magazine. I love American Patchwork and Quilting, and Chelsea will get her quilt today, so we'll show it to you next time. Yeah, next yes. time. Thanks, Mom. Okay. <laughs> okay, now to the listener questions. Yes, now now to the listener questions. Oh, okay. do we want to move this one? We can just okay. Okay. okay, so I feel like I know both of our answers to this one, but what hmm. is your favorite neutral color? This one is actually really, really hard. Oh, really? It is. Oh, I'm then I'm curious to see what you so, say we haven't talked about. I feel like gray is a neutral. I feel yeah. like taupe is a neutral. Yeah. But really, when, when I want to use a neutral, I feel like it's usually a tone-on-tone yeah. or low-volume ivory-based print. That's what I was going to say. Okay. I, I feel yeah. like that just... You need those neutrals right. for your, uh, like, you need them. Right. And I I was going to say anything tone on tone. Yeah. Just really yeah. bridges the gap between um, the right. balance in your quilt. So. Yeah. And just really, like, even with this mini quilt, it just really adds a little sparkle to have the yeah. tone on tone totally. prints. But that was a great question because it really got me thinking, do it. Do I like gray better or do I like ivory better or do I like I agree. Taupe? Now that you said that, so, gray is a great neutral. Yeah. Um, you have also used gray as a sashing in right. one of your quilts. And right. I was really surprised it was uh, with our Summer Sweet collection. Right. And I'm like, whoa, I really love that. Yeah. That was a great fabric to use for the sashing that I probably wouldn't have chosen right. had I not seen it. Right. So yeah. it's on your patchwork quilt if you want to share okay a picture of that so okay awesome okay and then the next question moving right into that how do you use low volume fabrics without the quilt becoming too busy and that is a great great example fabric a great question yeah I am somebody who really doesn't like things that are too busy yeah I need to have open space for my eyes to rest in a quilt but I, at the same time, I love lo- using low volume. So that's a great question. perfect examples right here. Yeah. Because I used a Bella 200 solid, actually, for this quilt. I didn't use the ivory. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because I needed to make something that would had a lot of blank space, just right. like for my eyes. But all of these, like... I feel like you think it's going to be too busy when you're using low volume fabrics, but you just need a nice balance of them. And once you have that, it's not too busy. Yeah. Especially once it's quilted and everything like sometimes what I'll do is use a little bit busier, low volumes in the blocks, but then I like to use a tone on tone ivory sashing in between the blocks to give that a nice balance. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. In fact, I just have been recently working on some quilts like that where I did use the low volumes in the quilt and then I kind of balanced it out by using something more simple for the sashing. And I noticed also that Chelsea, you know, this heart is surrounded just by By the the tone on tone. tone. Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like you can, if you make a block and you feel like it's too busy, don't panic. Yeah. If the quilt has sashing, try out some planar sashings and see if yeah. that will give or even the or space even that you need a plain border to expand your right. quilt because what your eyes are going to do when you see that yeah definitely trust the process right because once you get sashing on and get a border on and even when it's quilted it's an right. amazing difference right like yeah so just yeah like don't don't panic at first just trust your process and your vision and also What I do, we've mentioned this before, stand up on a chair and take a picture of the quilt and you'll be able to see. Right. Pictures are great. A little bit more clearly that will help you determine what you want to do. Right. And definitely this mini, 
it would not have worked if I had used a low volume for the sashing and the border. It yeah. needed that. The smaller the quilt, the more careful you have to be. Oh, definitely. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. So that that was a great question. Thank yeah. you so much. This next one, <laughs> the, guys, the next, you have the are, best questions. These are great questions. I was reading this one last night, and I what I did is I, I truly asked myself, and I'm like, well, what's my honest answer? And the question is. Do you ever lose interest in quilting being your business? And I just kind of sat on it and thought about it. And I don't, I truly, I don't lose interest because it's when I found quilting. Well, well, when I started, I, I've watched you quilt my whole life, (laughs) right? (laughs) But when I started, I was, I mentioned this in the last podcast, I was pregnant with my youngest child and I leaned on it as just a passion and something for me to do for me. So it started as something I fell in love with. So it didn't start as a business. I didn't start it to like make money and, you know, all this stuff. I started it because I truly loved quilting. And I think that's been the base of my answer is I don't ever lose interest in it. Yeah, I I love it. I really love it. Yeah. I thought about this question too. You could kind of take it two ways. Yeah. Do you ever ever lose interest in quilting because it's your business? Or oh. do you ever lose interest in quilting being your business? I, I thought you that know, is there's really great. Really you... two ways to look at it. And and so I thought I would answer both of those questions. And this is the English teacher. So, <laughs> so view, guys. well, there wasn't a comma in the question or any other punctuation. Yeah. And I probably should have emailed her back. But I thought, you know what, if we just talk about both, yeah. then we'll cover it. But I I don't think I could ever lose interest in quilting because like Chelsea mentioned, it's my passion, but I feel like it does wane at times. I feel like sometimes you just kind of lose your mojo mojo or whatever you want to call it. You're sojo. And, (laughs) and so, yeah, you go through those times and those are the times that I try to look through old patterns and look through my, organize my fabrics, something like that to get me inspired to want to sew again. Yeah. And as far as, I don't think I could lose interest in it being my business either because I feel like that's kind of a way to give back. Yeah. I've learned so much from other people and doing it as a profession enables us to share with other people. Yes. So. No, I really liked how you put that because yeah, there are times where I need to taste take a step back like I said I right I I'm not in my sewing room well I'm in there every day but yeah, not right. not all for sewing. business right yeah, or not always for sewing sometimes right. I, it's a project just for me that has nothing to do right with my quilting business so yeah. I yeah I love that you separated that and analyzed both sides of it yeah. so that's and then also true. I think something that we both do to keep this in check is we we don't just sew our own patterns and our own designs. Oh, we both no. take little breaks and we sew things that other people have designed and it's really fun and refreshing. Fabrics. Yeah. Yeah, we sew with other people's fabrics and other people's patterns yeah. and and so it's really refreshing. I'm actually working on four projects with other people's oh, fun. fabrics. Well, two of them, well, I haven't started the quilting the jelly snowflake quilt along oh right and deb strains fabrics are just so easy on the eyes and it was a nice change of pace for me yeah which was really great and then i have two fall patterns i know i've talked about before that i'll be working on at the end of the month okay yeah so yeah so okay next one and this is Oh, I love this question. Oh, you I guys, this is the best day. I think we could both talk about this one for a long time. But for a long time. The question says, talk about the sisterhood and brotherhood you share with other designers, teachers, businesses, and co-creators. And I feel like this is what we missed by not being able to go to Quilt yeah. Market in May. We missed that connection that we have with the other people in the industry. Yeah. And yeah, we keep that up through social media, but it's just not the same. Texting. Yeah. And texting, emailing, but it's not the same as going to lunch with somebody and and just having a conversation with a whole group of designers about what we're all passionate about. Yeah. And that's, what's so great about quilt market is we're, we're all so excited to go to lunch with each other because 
you get to catch up and when I went to my very first quilt market, it was kind of overwhelming and my mom was introducing me to people that she knew and loved. And now a lot of those people have become some of my closest friends and some of them I would honestly call family just because we're so, so close. The sisterhood of, you know, other designers, brother. Yeah, there's all everyone. It's just, um, I found my tribe with all of this. And I think that's the greatest takeaway from everything is the relationships that have cultivated and grown with fellow designers and other people in the industry. So I feel it's funny that you mentioned our first quilt market because as I was pondering this question, that's something I thought about too. And they kind of reorganize us at every market as far as who you're next to with your booth. Sometimes you get the same person a couple markets, but our first quilt market, they put us right in between Jan Paddock and Deb Strain. And Jan and Deb are seasoned Moda designers. Oh, yeah. I can't remember their numbers. Is is Jan, oh. was she number three or was Deb number Jan three? Jan has been with them for They're, so long and so has both Deb. Be, they've both been with Moda quite a while. And I thought that was so fabulous that they put our booth right in between theirs because we were asking them questions all oh, the time. all day. And they were, we were so, so nervous. sweet and they just... Yeah. answered all of our questions and both of their husbands were there and my husband was there so that they're was great hilarious because the men would talk and we, say oh this is what you're gonna learn you one know? of the funnest funnest things about market is the husbands let yes. me just tell you about the husbands yes they, there's a one i think deb's husband was a track coach yes. and he was just talking about philosophies of life with compared to to yeah. track and just the husbands are so great, you guys, because you see the support that they have for their wives, which is so right. awesome to see. And they're there, like, supporting their business, and right. they're a part of it, and so it's it's really, really fun. But I, I truly could talk about this question all day. Oh, yeah. Just because I love so many people that have, like, brought me under their wing and yeah um but yeah they are funny booth booth people and it is so fun when you get the layout for market and an email because you're like okay who am I next to who am I next who do I get to hang out with all day but if (laughs) not you're kind of just like waving to your friend across the aisle right we visit each other so and and I thought too there's so many other people behind the scenes with our company Moda you know um our design directors that we mostly communicate with through via email and then we get to see them and just a blessing to be able to have a a conversation with them or sit down with them at the table and you know people in the notions department or they truly put so much work in they work so hard and you see it yeah they're working all year long to to make it right you know flow and so they certainly i mean right they they are amazing. Yeah. And even when we visited Fat Quarter Shop last December for Bloomtopia, I have the best friendships with their film team. Right. And I still talk to them and message them. Right. Hi, and, Ashley. Yeah, hi, Ashley and Lily. Hi, and Lily. Kate and Kate. Kate. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. we can name drop so, them all. But yeah. I, it makes me miss them so much yeah. because... We just had the best time spending time with them and getting to know them. It was right. awesome. So. And I, I also don't, I I want to make sure I kind of put everybody in here, like the sales reps. From the Moda sales too. reps. Oh my we goodness. We get to know a couple more every time it seems like. And they give us the best advice because they're talking to the shop owners. Yeah. And they, they know. know what the shop owners they get the are looking for. Right. From them. Right. And I. I miss them too because right. having that connection with them right. and they work so hard and how they work has changed drastically right now right. with everything going on in the country and yeah they're they're still they're just awesome they're yeah. willing to adapt and right. do what they need to do to right be great reps and yeah so we just we love and appreciate those Basically, relationships with we everyone love everyone there. <laughs> So we, we could stay here for hours, but and even other companies, you know, oh, we, we f- know other people in the industry so great from too, outside of our company. Is we get to go visit other right. people from other companies, fabric right. companies at market, and so it's so sad that we don't get to see them. Right. And yeah, hearing that fall quilt market was canceled, we yeah. just miss everyone. 
Okay, so since we could talk about that question for days, let's yes. move on to the next okay. question, you guys. <laughs> for sure. Um, the next question is, do you have a favorite quilt block you like making more than others? This is a great question. Oh, I want to. You have to answer this one first. You made I me mean, answer. Can you guys guess <laughs> which okay. block I love? That's what I was going to say. I love a log cabin block. I really do. I have made several log cabin quilts. I mean, I have more at. I have one more at home that's not here that isn't Hearts at Home. But then I also the other day I was actually thinking about this randomly. I love a good star block. So I really, it's hard for me because some days I'm all about log cabins and other days I'm all about a sawtooth star because right. I just love how they look. I think they're so cute and pretty. And yeah, but I mean, on record, guys, log, log cabin, cabin might win. Okay. It's log cabin is definitely one of my top three. It's so good. I love log cabins <laughs> too. So, um, but stars, you're gonna say I. Knew I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna say, say star. <laughs> stars are favorites too. But honestly, and I'm not opposed. I the, mean, the the other one in there that might be number what? one is, is a I grandmother's know. flower garden block. I just love. What? You have made so many I've of those made recently. Several of those quilts, sense. and I have more. I just keep getting more ideas for how to lay out the grandmother's flower garden blocks. <laughs> So I would say those are my top three, a, a grandmother's flower garden. You have a lot flower, of patience. Log cabins and stars. And probably for stars, it would be either the sawtooth or the Ohio star. I love yeah. both of those. Yeah. So you but I love a- Irish chains too. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> she can't decide, <laughs> okay, you guys. She, she loves them all. Yeah. No. <laughs> but th- those are the top yeah. for sure. It's hard to choose. And especially where, whereas you've been quilting for so long and you do quilt. Right. So many different types of blocks. Sometimes it's refreshing right. to sew a new block and right. you realize you love it so much. Hard yeah. to choose, guys. Log cabin fan over here. <laughs> okay. So we have another question. And this is really a good one, too. Do you have tips for when you run out of fabric in a project? I actually thought of you in a project. When I this question. Really? Because you had to do this. So you told me about this with your red and white quilt. Yes. You ran out of fabric for that. And I think you had to go find some (laughs) yeah we were we're lucky that even though we live in a small town we have a hardware store that carries moda fabrics and i love it because it reminds me of like laura ingles and how they would go and to the hardware to the hardware store that's where you got your the little candies and the tools and the fabric sorry yeah we love getting fabric at our home hardware yeah in here but um i have actually haven't been in there very recently with the pandemic so I'm, yeah. I'm wondering how their supplies held out because I know a lot of people yeah w- have been making masks and yeah so in fact somebody sent me a picture the other day of um, a doll dress that she made with our fabrics that oh, she got oh really at the hardware store oh. so. yeah so super fun but but I thought about this well the first thing I thought of was a quilt that I have of my great-grandmother's and she had clearly run out of fabric and had pieced some other fabrics together for the backgrounds of her blocks. Oh. And I thought that was that was really ingenious. You know, this was back in the 1930s. And she obviously had run out of pieces that were big enough. Yeah. And so she was sewing scraps together to make the to larger make pieces. the larger pieces that okay. she needed for the background. I thought, wow. And I actually have done that a time or two I've I've done it once have you I have okay I'm glad you brought that up because well first of all back then Uh you got to make do right I mean you you used all of your resources and I think that's awesome she did that I did it on my swoon quilt my navy and gray one okay in one block because what I actually did is I cut I cut a piece wrong. Oh. And I was like, no, I had no more of that fabric left. It, right. And I was like, well, I'm, and you can't even tell after it was right. quilted, you can't yeah. even tell. So yeah, I did it once That's okay, good. for that. So, and uh, this question also kind of led me to thinking, I think it's why I probably make so many scrappy quilts because yeah. you don't have to worry about running. Yeah. If you run out of something, you can use something else in a scrap quilt. Yeah. So, 
Totally. Yeah. That's what's so, so fun about them is you're like, you want to know what? This would go really well. And right. And I don't need to have it all planned out in right. perfect amounts of everything. But definitely, I think if you talk to most quilters, if they've cut something wrong or run out, most people probably have sewn some smaller pieces together yeah. to get a larger piece. Yep. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, should we move So, on? we're getting close to the end. Tip of the day. Tip of the day. Do you have one or... I forgot to ask you before we started. <laughs> I have one. I, I've i been, you know, we've been really busy this month. And I had known this before, but as I've been trying to schedule out my time and figure out when I could get things done, and sometimes it involves other people. If I need to get a quilt to my quilter, I need yeah. to kind of give her an idea when I'm going to show up with this quilt. And so I've started adding 50% to my time if my first thought is to tell her oh I'll have this to you in three days I add I take 50% I add another day and a half and I tell her hey I'll have this to you in five days oh and and that way I'm not as stressed yeah if things go slower than I think I think that's it's good okay, it's good for her and so I've just been having to do that a lot lately with all the projects on the table yeah I think that's a great idea so Um, I don't know how doable mine is for people, but I did this last night. I just finished my jelly snowflake quilt Uh and I, I just pick up everything that's not like everything that doesn't need it to be on the board. I clean up my space after every finished project. That's great. That's going to be my tip because honestly it helps clear my mind and it helps me get ready for the next project. Right. So today I'm cutting out a new quilt and my sewing table, my room is ready. It's prepared for it, which helps the process so much more. That's great. That is my tip of the day. Awesome. (laughs) Okay. We have a couple of um, reviews from Apple podcasts and I'm not sure how you say the first name, but it's E-D-A-H-O-W. Sometimes people use abbreviations or, um, so I don't know if that's first name, last name combination, but Uh, she uh or he said, I love listening to this podcast. It's laid back and informative with a few laughs. (laughs) I love the sharing of what works for you and not just what the industry says you should do. Listening gets me very exciting for your upcoming line of fabric and patterns. I can't wait to see where your creativity takes us. And we really appreciate That's that. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. And I love that um, what you said. We we really, truly are being transparent and, and honest with answering our questions, which I think is really important. Um, right. We want to give exactly how we're feeling with right. every question and answer. So. Okay, so from Cynthia Horst, I loved listening to you. You've both got very soothing, easy on the ears voices. Thank you. (laughs) I also love hearing how you do things and your tips. Love your podcasts. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cynthia. We yeah, thank you, Cynthia. We we really appreciate that. And we we would love to hear your thoughts and if you leave a review, thank you so much. Right. Our next podcast will be airing Monday, Monday, August August 17th. 17th. Yes. Yes. We'll have three podcasts in the month of August. Yes. When we have those five Monday months, we throw in an extra episode. And hopefully we'll be able to share fabric and quilts with you guys by then. We're so, we're like right there. We're close. We're close. And mom has, you already have quilts done and bound. I walked in the room today (laughs) and I was like, what? She is amazing she's she's quick so (laughs) and precise piecing which is (laughs) something i'm still working on if i'm going very quickly but we appreciate all of your feedback yes thank you you know just remember you can listen in on your favorite subscriber or you can watch us on youtube and we'll have everything linked in the show notes for you in the description below right so thank you so much for listening in and joining us today yeah and thanks so much for stopping by (laughs) 